I can't believe we've gotten this nerdy to the tune that we're in the process of heading towards 20 videos on this playlist for hashtag anime taught me specifically focusing on the five things in regards it does to various topics with writing and uh i have notes i'm ready to get super nerdy let's get started Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Anime Taught Me. My name is Jenna O'Malley. I am your sole writer, author of sci-fi, fantasy with dashes of romance and nerdy references. Alongside the raw stories my characters view throughout time and space, I help other soul bards get back to creating the healing worlds they love to live in most for themselves and their readers. And one of the ways I do that is by nerding out about various things as part of my sitting down with soul writer vlog playlist. If you want to go ahead and check out the remaining contents of the playlist, check probably linked somewhere in the box or descriptions or cards throughout the video. So today we're looking specifically at the five things anime taught me about writing healing stories. For those of you who have ever heard me talk about writing as therapy, you understand what I mean. And definitely so there's anime that capitalize on that aspect in one way, shape or form. There's way more than five ways it does it. Sam Wicker did a video very similar on this topic. Go ahead and check it out as part of the hashtag anime taught me playlist. So that's two playlists you should be checking out just to be clear. As part of the notes, I will be checking them. I do apologize. I went old school. I'm just using my old, I went back to using my YouTube journal. Okay. We'll talk about my YouTube journal later at a later date, but anyway, um, so self doubt is one of the biggies that we conquer and face first in anime. There's a ton of anime that focus on helping viewers heal this aspect within them. One of the newer additions to this umbrella would definitely be Comey can't communicate as somebody who was very much an introvert to the point that nobody in high school knew my name. And nay, if I were to go back to even a high school reunion, no one would probably even know who the heck I is even today. Um, probably going to be one of those people who, when the day to become big and famous comes about, everyone in high school is going to be like, she knew how to talk. <laughs> so I kind of really relate to Comey, can't communicate in various levels because Comey has social phobia to the point that she is selectively mute and it takes you really, really, really getting to know her for her to even feel comfortable to hand write messages with you back and forth. Now, I was not in that realm of selective mutism to the point of not communicating. Like if the teacher called on me, I would still talk if forced to participate kind of deal. So I definitely do appreciate this story focusing on what it's like to be the popular girl. Yeah. To be the idol level popular girl who doesn't talk verbally to anybody. And no one wants to like, oh my God, she's so popular. She's our princess. She's our idol. We can't befriend her. Oh my God, she's too good for us. Kind of compounds an issue that was a choice. So she's kind of getting punished for her choice. And she has to face high school with not having very many friends until one person kind of breaks that wall and gets into the inner circle and through him, she learns to open up. So it's a lot of self-doubt that she has. A lot of, is she valid at play? 
As far as self-acceptance goes, we're going to kind of stick with that high school age for the main characters and go with Miyaka from Fushi Gyugi. This is an older anime, so I gave you kind of a newer anime about a high school, middle school age girl, and now I'm going to give you one from the late 80s, early 90s by comparison. And Miyaka has to go through self-acceptance in her age group but she gets transported to this fictional world in another country so she has to learn not only the rules of the fictional world but she has to learn the rules of the fictional world from the context of the culture they were written in which is not necessarily her native japanese culture i think it's chinese by comparison so you can see where it's it would be very akin to like an american who has British, Irish, Scottish, similar French and German ancestry from Europe, trying to have that similar kind of relatability. Like if one of us were to get drop kicked into the middle of, say, a Hans Christian Andersen type tale, if we have that kind of ancestry by comparison, and having to accept who you are on top of having to accept a brand new culture on top of having to accept that culture's reemergence of a new you and integrating all three layers of that, Miyaka goes through a lot. And it hits home when you compare her experience in the world to how her friend Yui was completely treated differently under the same scenario. Miyaka got treated like a goddess, like a queen, like this pure, untouchable being. Yu Yui, not so much, unfortunately. So you have the two worlds having to accept one another as friends all over again amidst the new self-acceptance of self. That's a lot of layers. Fushi Yugi is so in-depth. Anyway, so we're also going to go ahead and look at how you can heal an overzealous nature and there's one anime that capitalizes on this a little too much hold that thought i need help for this <clears throat> i told you i needed help for this I am very protective of a certain L from Death Note because of Light's overzealousness getting a certain L in trouble. You are safe. You and your cake. You are safe, my friend. Anyway, yes, I, I'm not happy with how his character arc ends, okay? Not at all. And it's because of the overzealous nature of multiple people that somebody paid the price most. Now there's differing things that happen depending on which version of Death Note you follow, depends on whether or not L stays alive until the end, spoilers. I'll let you figure out which version if you go watch for yourself, but literally someone had to make quote, an ultimate sacrifice because of somebody else's overzealous nature. For those of you who are not familiar with the concept of Death Note, heads up, it's going to get dark, really dark. <laughs> um, there is this book that if you write somebody's name, you can cause them to have things happen to them that are no longer making them of this mortal realm. And Light has, as the main character, has this very, the world is evil, dark, cruel, people deserve to be kind of like Hammurabi Codian level, eye for an eye almost. And it goes to Light's head in the worst overzealous of ways. And you can see how not healing certain aspects and how not integrating certain aspects of the self become very dangerous very quickly with extremely high odds at stake. I adore you, my friend. So number four, we're gonna look at self-isolation. And while you're thinking, wait a minute, Jenna, isn't that Comey? Didn't that happen to Miyaka? And come on, might as well say, 
this is the result of self-isolation by choice is L. Anybody can say or possibly agree with that, but truly self-isolation, I'm looking at by choice in a generation of Japanese game players that is now leaking its way into tons of media. We're talking about not just what happens in Sword Art Online. I'm going with Uncle from Another World on this. If you've never seen Uncle from Another World, you need to. Oh my God, the nerdy references just make my fangirl heart go, ah! On top of that, <laughs> on top of that, you have a situation where this uncle has kind of been locked in video games under a very similar to Sword Art Online but much longer run. Like he's missing for a good chunk of his nephew's life because you're dropped into the story from uncle from another world from the nephew's perspective. And you're kind of getting the story from the nephew's perspective of the uncle explaining his time stuck in the video game realm, basically. And you really get this sense from the nephew's perspective that not only was the uncle lonely here in this world as a human, but that didn't leave his persona when the uncle went into the video game world's character there. He didn't separate. And it became this whole new level of self-isolation, personal bleed into a character that it became all-consuming. And if you know how the ending of season one ends and that one tiny piece that they didn't solve from the opening theme song credit roll b-roll you know that literally slight spoiler alert there is this desperation that the uncle feels trapped in at least a metaphorical prison and you're like but we never talked about the prison yet season two right so you have now this Ha this whole thread of self-isolation has been pulled to a cliffhanger crux point. And it's so artfully done that you forget you're talking about mental health and gaming. Intertwined side by side. And the story does such respect to what it means to be a person who is recovering from that extreme clinical hermit mode that I'm very thankful to see it out in this world to balance something of the past like SAO or .hack by comparison. And then number five, we're looking at, again, relationships. And I'm gonna take it back to Oran High School Host Club here. I mentioned in a previous episode that if any character in Oran High School Host Club has plot armor, it's Haruhi's dad. And I would venture to say that's because he's one of the oldest characters in the plot. And I'm kind of bringing some of the life lessons the students learn through Haruhi's dad to some of the conversations that happen to Kyoya, or through rather, Kyoya and Tamaki's dads as well, when they're talking kind of about who gets to marry Haruhi in the end and who, who who's vying for that to that conversation with her dad first to arrange it, right? And the general consensus at the end is you have to let her pick the relationship that she feels suits her best. Throughout the entire anime, we watched Haruhi struggle, not just with your stereotypical high school relationships. She is a poorer student on scholarship at a very prestigious academic school for the social elite. So she feels very much like peasant versus commoner to the point that that's the slang around the school to call her even, hello, Mill, when they first meet her. And she disguises herself accidentally and inadvertently so through a series of rather comedic events hilariously laid out in episode one rather classfully and comedically <laughs> using arrows as needed. And um, she gets herself into debt and into trouble to the host club who's run by Pompous Tomaki. And she learns right off the bat that 
if she's going to survive in this school, she can't be so low like she originally planned. The entire anime opens up to a conversation she has with her deceased mom through prayer, through, you know, grief, talk, whatever you want to label it as. And she, by the end, no longer needs to reach out all the time and talk to her mom. Why? She finds some best friends, some brotherly figures even, who are going to watch out for her for the rest of her life. She has at least, at least three options in potentially really solid once they grow up into good men soulmates. All different types of soulmates that if she doesn't marry the other two, they're going to become part of that best friend category and be okay with it. She learns to grieve for her mom and that it's okay to lean on her dad and that in some ways it was okay that the gender reversals in her parents' relationship were already set up to where mom kind of wore the pants in the family and dad didn't. And it was completely copacetic and normal and what she grew up with. And I think in the long run, that's the parent she needed was the stay at home dad who works in the industry that he works in to be very feminine because her mom was quite the tomboy, much like her. And she ends up with all these relationships that don't replace the void of missing her mom, but that help her inner child to go, you know, it's okay to enjoy the rest of my life. That's what her mom would want her to do. And she learns that it's safe to lean into relationships and to heal with relationships through her grief. So... Thank you all. <laughs> this has been a very heavy episode. So thank you very much for sitting through my inclusions to hashtag anime taught me. We are possibly doing something very similar like this again in about a year where I'll collab out on a topic similar to and we'll make another playlist. There are going to be more entries into this playlist and Depending on how things go in the next couple of weeks, maybe I'll add bonus content. We have until February 29th to finalize the playlist for those of you who are in the process of creating an addition to. And all of us who participated are getting ready to schedule a March Q&A live stream with everybody on screen together. We definitely look forward to seeing you then. And above all, take care of yourself. You've always been worth it. Bye. <laughs>